Welcome back everybody. So today I'm going to be making fried catfish and homemade hush puppies. I'm also going to be making homemade coleslaw and some smashed potatoes. I will link the potatoes and the coleslaw recipe videos below this video so you can check out in full detail how I make the sides. But I am ready to fry up some catfish and some homemade hush puppies. So if you stick around, I will show you how I make it. To start, I'm going to make the hush puppies. And I want to say the ratio of the flour and cornmeal, you can change that to suit your textured preference. Um, I like a softer hush puppy, so I'm going for a full cup of all-purpose flour to a half cup of cornmeal. I'm also going to be adding one teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of sugar. If you want it to be slightly sweeter, you can add maybe a full two tablespoons. It's up to you. Now I'm going to add a half cup of whole milk. Well, I'm going to start with a half cup. Ultimately, I will be adding three quarters of a cup of whole milk. Next, I'm going to add one large egg and two tablespoons of finely minced onion. Now, sometimes I like to use scallion in place of the onion, and I like to add pickled jalapenos to this, but today I'm not eating this, and my son really doesn't like to see green things for some reason in the hush puppy, so I opted to use some yellow onion. But you can definitely play around with the ingredients in your hush puppies. So I'm going to give this a mix, and this batter is something you can make a day ahead. Actually, there are several things if you are having a fish fry, or preparing a meal for the next day, you can do a lot of things ahead of time. So for example, this hush puppy batter, you can make it the night before. So now I have my fry oil up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a good fry temperature. I'm just going to take this one and a half tablespoon scoop and start scooping in batter. And the best way to do this, because they will start forming weird shapes, um, is to pour the batter in the same spot and not to move it around. And that will help you create a rounder hush puppy. Now these are not going to be perfectly shaped, but they are really good. So I'm going to fry these until they are a deep golden brown color, which usually takes around two minutes. It, it does go fairly quick. And once they start floating to the surface, you'll wanna flip them over so they can get even color on the hush puppy. So the texture of these hush puppies are very light and airy. They're very soft, but if you prefer a dense hush puppy, then you might want to switch the ratios of the cornmeal and all-purpose flour. Okay, so now that my hush puppies are done, I want to show you what they look like on the inside. And like I stated, we like to eat a softer, light and airy hush puppy, and that is definitely what these are. Okay, so now I'm going to work on my fry mix for my fried fish. So here in a bowl, I have two cups of cornmeal and one cup of all-purpose flour. And if you're making a breading or your fry mix, if you just have salt and pepper, add it to the flour and cornmeal, you have a good fry mix. But I'm going to add some other dry seasonings to really make this flavorful. So for example, I have one teaspoon of paprika I'm adding to my bowl. I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of onion powder, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. I have three teaspoons of lemon pepper, and I'm going to use two and a half teaspoons of seasonal seasoning salt. You could just use regular salt, but I really do like using seasoning salt for a lot of things. So I'm going to combine this and give this a mix. So now that my fry mix is combined, I'm going to start working on the fish. So I am using two and a half pounds of catfish fillets. You could use the fish of your choice and this recipe definitely works for around two and a half to three pounds of fish. So here I have three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. To that I am going to add one teaspoon of seasonal seasoning salt and some cracked black pepper. Now the dried seasonings in your fry mix and in this flour dredge, you could actually season it with what you like. If you want to use Cajun seasoning or Creole seasoning, you can definitely use that. It's up to you. And if you want things saltier, then add more. I'm gonna be honest, this fry mix is not super salty because we like to add things like tartar sauce, hot sauce, and ketchup and lemon. But if you want things saltier, then play around with the ratios of the seasonings. So I'm just going to dredge 
my catfish fillets into the flour. I'm going to coat them on the front and back. So once my fish is coated, I'm going to start setting up my dredging station. But first, I have four large eggs in a flat bottom dish. This is actually a pie dish. I'm going to go ahead and beat those. And then I'm going to add a half cup of cold water. And this will actually just sort of help create more of the egg wash. So I can dredge my catfish in the egg wash, and then I'm going to dredge it in the fry mix. So again, catfish, egg wash, fry mix onto a baking pan. And I'm just going to do this until all of my catfish is coated and dredged in my fry mix. And I also wanted to mention a tip. If you dredge your catfish, all of your catfish, and just let it set, and then allow your oil to come up to temperature before you fry, that 10 minutes that you're letting it set there really helps the crust adhere to the catfish. If you are dredging it and then putting it right into your fry oil, then you might get a lot of dredge that falls off into your fry oil. So in order for the coating to adhere better to the catfish, coat it first and just let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes to really give it a chance to set onto your fish. So now that all of my catfish is breaded, I'm going to let it set and let my fry oil come up to temperature. So my fry oil has been preheated to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to be placing my fried fish on this baking sheet lined with a rack. You could use the paper towel method if you like, but now I'm going to add two pieces of my breaded catfish into my large skillet here, and I'm going to fry them for about three to four minutes on each side. I think a good cook time for this cut of catfish, because these are sort of thicker in the middle, would be about eight minutes. But it definitely is up to you, depending on how you cut your catfish fillets or how you get them from the butcher. So this batch of fried fish took around seven minutes to cook. So just be mindful that the cook time may vary depending on the thickness or cut of your fish. So my fish is fried to a beautiful golden brown color. And before I serve a plate, I want to show you how I made a homemade tartar sauce to go along with this. So in a bowl, I'm adding eight ounces of mayonnaise. And I do want to mention the ratios of a lot of these ingredients are up to your taste. So I'm adding one scallion that I chopped. I'll be adding a half tablespoon of chopped fresh dill. Now I'm going to add a little bit of salt to taste. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of sugar. Now I'm going to add some black cracked pepper and one tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And I am started to mix this, but I also will be adding two tablespoons of dill pickle. After mixing it, I realized that I forgot one ingredient. So like I stated earlier, you can definitely play around with the ratios of ingredients. Um, it is definitely up to you. And this is a great make ahead recipe. You could do this the day before and it tastes great the next day. So my catfish is done and I'm ready to serve a plate. And I want to show you how crunchy this is. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.